Greetings and welcome back to room 303, Senior A English, and we are in our study of Shakespeare's sonnets. We turn now to the great sonnet 73. I'm with you on page 375. Uh, now, this is one of uh, Shakespeare's most famous sonnets, and it really uh, does have to do with the extended metaphor of the tree. Now, we've uh, obviously, we've spent a lot of time in 303 talking about Ruthie's tree out there in the courtyard. She planted it there years ago to because she knew we use this metaphor all the time. Our lives, in large measure, are like trees, which are uh, wonderful, wonderful symbols, right? Because, of course, that tree, it's hard to explain how that tree exists at all, right? And, of course, biologists will tell us that there's more of that tree under the ground than there is above the ground, which would have to make sense for it to physically stand in the first place, right? And there's, there's a whole lot of interesting things that could be said about that tree and the loss of its leaves and the passage of time and the ways in which the tree looks dead in the middle of January and then it comes back to life. It's almost a miracle of a kind that then all of a sudden in May, the leaves all come back again. And then again by October, November, the leaves begin to drop off. What if your life is like a tree? Shakespeare, the speaker of our poem here, will play the same game. Sonnet 73. That time of year thou mayest in me behold, when yellow leaves or none or few do hang upon the boughs which shake against the cold, bare ruined choirs, where late the sweet birds sang. In me thou seest the twilight of such day, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away death's second self that seals up all the rest. In me thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie as the deathbed whereon it must expire consumed with that which it was nourished by. This thou perceivest which makes thy love more strong to love that well which thou must leave and long. Now, of course, we're playing around with an extended metaphor, a symbol of a tree, and the way in which the poet speaker says, I'm already beginning to see that I'm like a tree that is, like all trees, aging, getting older. He says, that time of year thou mayest in me behold when yellow leaves, or none, or few do hang, obviously the time of the year we're talking the fall, right? The autumn, the, the winter. In other words, if life is like the seasons, you have your birth, the spring, you have your summer, which of course you're enjoying now, and then you have your fall, right? Hmm. Now, <laughs> what's that going to look like? What's that going to feel like? Well, we know what it looks like with Ruthie's tree. Those beautiful green leaves start to turn something other than green, right? They'll turn yellows, they'll, they'll turn reds, they'll turn browns, grays, and ultimately they'll fall. He says, I'm beginning to already realize that this is happening for me, right? He says, upon those boughs, the branches, which shake against the cold, bare, ruined choirs, where late the sweet birds sang. In other words, in the middle of the winter, there won't be anybody sitting on my branches, no, no, no birds on my branches. And then in line five, it becomes personal again. In me, thou seest the twilight of such day. In other words, it's coming. We can already predict it's coming. As, another, another simile, comparison using like or as, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away death's second self that seals up all in rest. In other words, in the same way at night that you sleep, the end of your life is like the coming of night, and you'll go to sleep a second death. In me, back, notice this is the third time, that in me, right? In me, thou seest the glowing of such fire that on the ashes of his youth doth lie as the deathbed whereon it must expire consumed with that which it was nourished by. Now, some have seen the possibility of the use of the phoenix uh, resurrection motif here. I think Shakespeare is making a clear point, though, that you can look at a young person and already see 
the aging process is happening. Okay? And in that moment, there's a certain kind of perspicacity, insight, right? That is to say, hmm, if I'm a senior now and I wasn't four years ago, I wonder what I'll look like in four years. I wonder what I'll look like in 40 years. Hmm, very interesting questions. About this aging process, and that's the antecedent to the pronoun this at the, uh, at the beginning of the rhymed couplet, this thou perceivest. In other words, you're watching me get older, which makes thy love more strong. Love is the attempt to transcend the aging process of time. He says, to love that well which thou must leave ere long. This is, of course, the essence of the notion of great love. Because one knows that one does not have people with one forever, that's what gives love its power. And it is an interesting question. I mean, I have, I have seniors who will hear what I'm about to say and they go, wow, I guess I haven't thought about that, I'll try it. This evening, go home, sit at the table, and actually look at the people who raised you. Really look at them. I mean, don't just quickly eat your meal and run off to go do whatever wretchedness it is that you have to do. Look at them and notice they're aging. They're, they're aging. And because they're aging, it might make sense for you to pay attention to them because you also are aging. And to that degree, he says, the reason we love the people in our life so much is because we are aware they're here, but not for long. And that makes the love of those individuals that much more profound. Well, obviously in 3A you can jot down Sonnet 60 and Sonnet 12. And trying to answer that question in your annotations, how does Sonnet 73 play along with the games of Sonnet 12 and Sonnet 60. All of them obviously are treating the issues of time, the passage of time, and the ways in which the passage of time will emphasize the value of love. And then at 3A, uh, 3B finally, what are your thoughts about this? To what degree do you treasure the people in your life because they are aging? And some of us have lost family members who are older, and we recognize, if only I could just have, like one of my students once said, I was very close to my grandma, I, I'd give anything to have 10 minutes of conversation with, with her now. When I had all that time with her, it just I didn't understand the value of it, and now I do, which is why I'm so, I'm so focused on the people in my life, especially those who are older than me, and I want to give as much attention to them as possible. I want to treasure that time, because it is precious. And of course, Sonnet 73 reminds us that art is precious, because it reminds us of the preciousness of life. Thank you.